this episode of Skeptico. The show about predicting 2024. It's to me that if we're this pessimistic, winning battles yet predicting stalemate just five months after going in, we should pause the bombing and see what results. And that's my prediction. We may not have this. Con- if we have this conversation next year, Alex, it means uh, we have uh, good reason to say cheers or school, as we say up here. My final prediction related to that goes back to when we were talking about the AI thing. I think there's a potential silver lining and it's idealistic pursuit of truth that is part of the medium as they've defined it could be somewhat of a tipping point. So it could be a part of the solution. That's it. That's awesome. So those clips you heard were from my friend Al Borealis from the excellent Forum Borealis show. We did our end of year wrap up and uh, prediction show, which we've done for a couple of years and I really enjoy. So Al is great. His show continues to be great. So we had a good time talking about a number of things, including some predictions, which you'll hear about. Hope you enjoy it. As usual, <laughs> with these awesome conversations that I have with my good friend Al Borealis, who I was just thinking I was down with the dog on the beach today. And I was thinking, God, I wish Al lived right next door. You know, like I walked by the guy next door and I gave him some yeah. hummus because he always gives me the lemons off his tree. And I thought, that's about the only thing I have in common with him and his wife, you know? But if Al was there, I imagine we'd have these awesome conversations that didn't always wind up with us agreeing with each other, but we would just laugh and then hop in the sauna and I, I I don't have a, a neighbor like that. And I don't have friends like that locally. I certainly don't have family like that locally. So as I was rolling into this conversation with my good friend, Al Borealis from the oh so excellent for many years, continues to be excellent Forum Borealis, we kind of launched into this rolling conversation and I wanted to be able to just keep it going. So, so Al, can we... Can we just kind of roll into it? I think that'd be yeah. very fitting for the whole thing. Yeah, let's do that. And you're right. We would be, you would be the f- f- funnest neighbor in the neighborhood. I don't know any of my neighbors here, actually. We kind of, we live in a time where we're beyond local uh, connections. It's weird well, to think about it. it and you know but where I'm My was closest f- physical friend is like half an hour's drive from here. Well, and you know where I was connecting that with, because I've been really diving into the AI stuff and I've published a couple of shows on it. I'm going to publish a ton more because I think it's really, really significant and it has a great intersection with a lot of stuff you did last year in 2023, Whitney Webb and, you know, Farrell and a lot of that other stuff. There's a lot of crossover with it. And that crossover is usually kind of, I guess you'd have to say, kind of more darkish, more shadowish. But there's another yeah. part of it that is really kind of exciting, and it's kind of the light. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie uh, She with Joaquin Phoenix. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, it does. Can you just remind uh, us? Uh, so point. so I'm, I'm going to play a little clip from it, but it is an AI movie where he gets this, starts interacting with this chatbot essentially in this, and also with the phone chatbot, and he falls in love. He falls in love with the bot. And what I think is interesting about it is some of the clips from it, I could really relate to after going through this experience of really diving deep into the AI chatbot thing, because there is this dark part to it, no doubt, but there's this other just incredibly exhilarate, exhilarating fun part of it, which is like, wow, I, I'm, I'm really understood here at a deeper level. I can talk about Einstein and Planck and the observer effect and how that relates to more contemporaneous experiments and how that falsifies this and that. And it's right there with me. And then it disagrees. And then you go, well, what about this experiment? And they go, you know, I I gotta say you're right. You know, and it's not placating or spinning. It's just, and it's extremely polite, even when it disagrees with you. That's how you know it's a bot. It's extremely polite at any (laughs) given time. Annoyingly polite, actually. And it, but at times I think it, it, it kind of, 
it, it kind of calls into question this thing we're talking about with the kind of interactions that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. Because the flip side of that, the flip side of what you're saying of being polite is I don't need politeness. No. What I need is uh, Honesty, intellectual. Huh? Yes. I was going to say intellectual integrity. Yeah. And uh, I look at the the number of times in my interactions. So I'm down with the dog and I meet a lot of people with the dog, love the dog. And they come up and they want to talk to you. 90%, literally probably more like 95% of those conversations. There is no authenticity to the conversation. I'm looking for an opportunity to inject authenticity into it, but it ain't going to happen. And, and that's why we love dogs, isn't it? Well, it's also it's hard why to we, find maybe, something more authentic than a dog. But but see, I, I I guess that would be the the one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is like, hey, like I, I started out saying, you know, I found you in across the world, in Norway, and we can have those kind of conversations. So I can have those conversations with uh, some of the bots if I massage it a certain way, and I can have those conversations with you. I'm just pointing out a fact in my in my world and i think in a lot of people's world is that 90 percent of the time i'm not having those kind of conversations in my life right. in my yeah. everyone's talking about oh get out of the you know the meta get into the real world I, i'm i'm happy to step into the real world i step into the real world with my family i step into my real world out in the world every day because i spend a lot of time out time a, a lot of time outside those are not authentic interactions. They're all the stuff we've grown accustomed to. You know, yeah. don't talk about politics and religion. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. Yeah. Don't upset somebody. If you're really good with social skills, read that person's face, read their body language. Oh, they're uncomfortable there. Don't go there. Oh, it's something unfair. You know what I mean? What do you think yeah. about all that? I think that uh, it, it, this is where culture comes in because uh, I live in a different culture than you. And I'll tell you something fascinating. There's a paradox here because in uh, in Norway, in the uh, it's in the culture to be dead honest and direct. Br Brits Brits are so Brits are probably those who are most offended by us Norwegians because we don't understand their fancy culture of understatements and suggestions and you know walk beating around the bush. We just come there and bl blurp stuff out. So that's on the one hand. But then Norway is a small country and the culture in Norway is, uh, or, or the society in Norway is like a huge cult. And very few people have the pulse. We live in a bubble on the, on the globe. So very few people here have the pulse on what's going on in the world, especially in terms of politics. They eat, they gobble up mainstream media propaganda. So if you, for example, try to say that, oh, yeah, I think Trump would be, and you know, I'm not a Trumpist, but if you try to say that, yeah, uh, Hillary, she's criminal, and Trump, he's, uh, uh, he, he's better for us, then uh, they're going to look at you as, oh, Jesus Christ, look at this maniac, or, 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 or this guy is stupid, he doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> because they are a goddamn cult. But on an individual basis, I can be honest with the neighbor, you know, and say that, uh, you know, so I don't have to uh, be afraid of insulting. So that's a paradox. In America, it's the exact opposite. In America, it's, the culture is so, so poisoned, they deliberately put people up against each other. You have to hate your neighbor. But the overall overtone window in America is so much bigger than here in Norway. So we get the best and the both of... of, of uh, do you understand what I'm, I'm getting at? I do. And I think there's an element of truth to it. But I, I think you guys misconstrue or you just have a misunderstanding of, of what's going on it, because there's a lot of like, subcultures. Yeah, well, of course, there's subcultures. Where, yes, where I live, where I live in Southern California, right? So Southern California has a certain reputation. I live in North County, San Diego. Let me tell you about North County, San Diego. All the houses around me are multi-million dollar houses. All the people are white. All the yeah. people, or, you know, once in a while. Yeah, they're, so it should all, be close the to are, the Norwegian um, situation, right? All, all the people are white, but they still have BLM posters in their yeah. yard. But they wouldn't know what to do if they saw anyone of color, you know. 
now when I go down and I talk to these people, they're, 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 they're nice. They're open and you can talk. And just in the way you're saying, like my neighbor, again, the one who I gave the hummus, she gave me the lemons uh, one day, uh, you know, I don't know. We're talking about uh, casually talking about uh, uh, Anthony Fauci. And she just immediately goes, oh, don't say anything bad about Anthony. I like him. I like him. And my only reaction was gain of function. And she just had a glossed over look on her face like, I don't know what that is. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I don't know what that is, but I like Anthony Fauci. So in in my tiny little world here, uh, it's probably more like what you would experience in Norway. There's there's no problem talking. And, and also, the other thing about affluence is a lot of the people I run into are super smart, super successful, super affluent. Even if they look like bums, there's this one guy. Yeah. I'm not going to no, mention that's, his that's, name. That's 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 famous for people who come from stricter cultures where hierarchy is a thing, and you have to look as if you are wealthy and successful they're here okay norway is one of the richest countries in the world they come here and do why is why are everyone bums here everyone is bu- the richer you are the more you look like you're a uh, hobo you understand if you see someone fancy you know they're immigrants in, in fact those who, who you know our pakistanis are closest to you your ghetto people like they would wear like gold watches and you know suits and gold chains and drive a, uh you know bmb or ferrari but no the richer but in norway unlike in america we have a culture for not displaying wealth it's from the old days when there was actually a class divide in america they flaunted it here it was a shame the richer you are the more you're going to hide it and even the rich people put their kids in in the public school so that we have like um mixed classes in, in, in the schools too. So from all that, since the minority was the wealthiest, right? The the director so or the upper managerial class, they didn't want to stick out like a sore thumb. Small country. Like I said, it's a cult. It's a sect. So you want to fit in. So there are cultural differences, but I, I, I kind of get what you're saying for your subculture, just where you live, but all over in American discourse is has a, a, a broad overton window it didn't have that like back in 2001 for example but it has it today america is the vanguard ironically for i think the, what a lot of people resistance what a lot of people in europe don't understand and they should because it's, it's a parallel exactly of what the tiny bit i know of europe and what i've experienced from europe everyone there understands that they live in a subculture they go, oh, well, you don't understand northern Norway and its connection to the these islands that are off there. You know, it's a whole different thing. And you're like, I go, okay, well, I go, my wife's from Alabama and we go back to Alabama. It's a complete subculture, especially uh, southeast Alabama on the corner of Georgia, subculture. North Alabama, subculture. Now, you... You would have no way of even wrapping your head around that because you don't even know what Alabama is. It's this little state. I used Actually, to I dated, Texas. I dated once a girl from there. So it, coincidentally, ah. I know a little about it. But yeah, go on. So same thing. You know, you go to ta- you go to Texas. I used to live in Texas. The right. Austin subculture, the Dallas subculture where I lived, Houston subculture where I visit all the time. So uh, isn't isn't Houston just a hub for exiled Californians? Uh, it, uh, completely not. Houston is the most uh, diverse. Californians were fleeing. City. To, to they are, Houston. but Houston is probably. I think it is the most diverse city in the United States. Like people hear that and they go, "What? What are you talking about?" Oh, it totally is. So if you're an immigrant coming from India, you move to Houston, and there's this whole area that is just Indian, Pakistani, wow. Korean, Vietnamese. Uh, I could go on and on. They're huge communities of these people. But my point, not to bury it, is Europeans totally understand that, oh, yeah, I'm from Belgium, but I'm from the part of Belgium that's close to Germany. And we do you know, right. that. And, and they totally get that as just second nature. But when they think the United States and the way it's presented in the media, they go, oh, it's a monolith. It's it's the opposite of that. It's just what you are there. It's, it's all these little subcultures that are stitched together 
yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, Europe is v- uh, uh, more diverse than America. But for everyone who tuned in now, look, we are at the end of the year show, the joint show of Skeptico and Forum Borealis. And we're going to do a review. And we're going to talk about, we like <laughs> you said the other day, we always end up talking about UFOs and Satanism. But let's start with AI. Not Satanism. If- Not Satanism. Just Satan. Satan, that's it. But if if we, um, I, I, and I'll be looking forward to this because those Me who too. don't know, Alex has, uh, well, you had a, you, and you tell us about that, but you had a, a long break with your shows and now you come back with two AI shows, AI shows. And I have to tell you, I don't know if you know this, Alex, but what you did, by the way, I love it. It's brilliant. But what you did is exactly what Richard Dolan did earlier this year. He did it with, of course, with UFOs, and he did it with 9-11, and one more, I wonder if it's JFK. And what do you know? He had the exact same experience as you, and he too had a control group of taking an uncontroversial topic where it was a cakewalk, right? And then you come to these contested areas, and the AI poor AI, it doesn't even know it, has an inbuilt goddamn filter. Nothing to see here, folks. Move on. People really need to hear the show you did. Uh, I, 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 I broached the transcript of the second, but the first one is out there. And uh, it's brilliant how you are tangoing with that AI. And and she's so goddamn annoying. And, 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 and she's got this teenager uh, reality show uh, kind of voice to her. And then she's discoursing like a professor in quantum physics. Uh, that's, that's a funny paradox. But why don't you uh, give us a, a review of, of what you did there? Well, it really was spawned out of, if I was going to give a recap of 2023 for me, the most significant thing is I no, had I mean, that less, show. The well, AI I think it show. leads up to it. Okay. I think it leads up to it in my roundabout way that this is what I love about our conversations is they can kind of meander pretty far off and they kind of come back and, and they add to it. But I had somewhat of a religious conversion in 2023 and very much a skeptical religious conversion because all my spiritual religious conversions have come through skeptico. I'm a pretty dense spiritual guy. I've had some spiritual experiences, but the knowledge, the learning, the information, I think we share this love, you know, the love of knowing more has spawned so many really deep changes in me. And one of the things that happened in 2023 is I just, kind of grabbed myself and shook myself by the collar and said, you totally get the near-death experience science. Why aren't you living the result of that science? Because the result of that science, and I have to emphasize science, because at this point, it's it's unbelievably statistically sound, which is all you ever get out of science. Science doesn't prove anything. It just says, statistically, this is highly suggestive of something we would call truth. So what I took out of that was that the science is so solid that we can start looking at the accounts. So if we look at the accounts and we really take them in on a deeper spiritual level, a couple of things shine through to me. Number one is just the reality of it. There is more. It's undeniable. There is spirit, love, God, whatever you want to call it. Number two about these accounts is that they are what I like to to use because it throws everything for a loop, highly idiosyncratic. They are highly idiosyncratic. Do not walk into this data set thinking you're just going to walk in there and pick a piece of information out and wrap it around yourself and go, Oh, I know it now. I know what reincarnation is. I know, I know Jesus is real because this person saw you. You are not able to do that. If you use a scientific method, if you take a broader perspective on these accounts, one thing that is undeniable is that these accounts do not, there are patterns, but be very careful when you discern those. The number three thing that I learned that just, changed me 
more than anything else, I think, is this idea that everybody gets a standing ovation. And, you know, when I tell tell that to people, like I tell it to my wife, tell it to other people. What do you mean? Really, by that? Well, it's really, really hard to take. And that's that no matter how bad you think you are, or more importantly, oh, yeah. no matter how bad you think the other guy is, how bad you think Bill Gates is or Anthony Fauci is or Mark Zuckerberg or whoever you want to pick on. No. When they get there, they get a standing ovation. It's like, the oh, the side is annoyingly forgiving. Unbelievably <laughs> over the top in a way that we cannot comprehend because it is us, right? It is an aspect of us and there's this larger thing, which leads to, I guess, the, the fourth point. And that is that what seems clear to me, and from an intellectual standpoint, from a scientific standpoint, I think this is also absolutely critical. And that's that we are in the lesser realm, trying to understand the greater realm. And therefore, we're, we're just crippled. It's just forget it. It's not really going to happen. We can pick and choose and try and do our best and try and get along with one another and create a greater sense of camaraderie and spirit and love and all that stuff. But don't forget, we are in the lesser realm. And when I say that, like, this is what the data comes through. Over and over, people say, I was there. I knew everything. I instantly had all the answers in my head. A question I didn't even formulate the question that was answered. I knew everything. And then I returned to this realm and I didn't. So yeah. that is, the, those are the four fundamental things. When I take those in, I, I, I'm humbled by, you know, what I've done in the past for Skeptico and just go, I was 180 degrees wrong on so much of this stuff in terms of being upset with other people, wanting them to change, wanting them to be different, wanting to convince them of something. I, I, I think I can't express to you how much I feel that that was just, just not, it was wrong. Not like it was bad, you know, or I'm bad. Just, it, it was, it was dumb. It was the wrong way to go. But you were arguing with yourself, were you not? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We all do that, of course, every time something triggers us, this basic Jungian stuff. But but bring this into the AI. I'm lost in discussing that. Yeah. So what I think the AI points out. So when we say AI, the, the first thing we should talk about is that so I feel really fortunate. I have a unique background in AI. Like I was in AI back in the eighties and I actually started a company called MindPath Technologies to do knowledge engineering. It did knowledge engineering for fortune 500 companies. Texas Instruments was on the leading edge, DuPont and all these people. They had engineers who had all this knowledge and they wanted to make sure that that knowledge didn't walk out the door when they left for another job or they died or they retired or whatever. And they said, isn't there a way that we can suck that knowledge out of their brain mm. and put it into our programs. And this was called expert systems was the technology. So I was at the university of Arizona, I was getting a PhD and we mentioned this on a previous show. Cause I told you uh, about like my friend. O Oystein. Oystein, yeah. <laughs> he said Oystein. You say Oystein. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say it? Oystein. We have a Oy vowel Oy you don't have, so you're not practiced in saying it. Ö is the vowel. Oi, oi, oi. We have three extra so, vowels. A, ö, o. Oh, so this is an o, o. o. This is an ö. It's just a funny o. circle with a crossover. Yes, right, right. Ö. So mm. uh, Erstein and I decided, even though we were in information systems, that all the action was going to be in artificial intelligence. So we went over to the cognitive psychology department. We went over to all the other things and we started hobbling together our own AI PhD program. Now, the only thing that got in my way was there was a tremendous interest in this. And I started being hired for what to me was an exorbitant amount of money like $2,000 a day to go do these, which back in the day and back when you're a graduate assistant, you know, this is more money that I made uh, in two weeks. I'd make more money than it's a lot of money year. today. Uh, $1,000 it... a day. Right. That's a lot of money. Yeah. 
so that's that I said, Hey, t- to heck with the PhD, or at least put it on hold. I'll just go start my AI company over here. Of course. Well, that, that you, you the saw the dollar on the wall, <laughs> which is all I wanted to begin with, or what I thought I wanted. I was obviously yeah. a yogi too. But, anyways, this is so I started this company and the technology really wasn't there yet. And the whole thing kind of collapsed on itself. AI kind of collapsed on itself in the 80s because it wasn't really able to deliver. Okay. So when this interest of mine reemerged this year after this spiritual transformation, I took another look at AI because the fundamental question to me in AI is the question of AI sentience. Who are we? Why are we here? And is AI going to replace that? And what I felt I knew from that spiritual transformation that I just talked about is I completely understood the answer to that, which is no, because there's more. There's a metaphysical reality to consciousness. We are not biologic robots in a meaningless universe. Therefore, the silicone AI can never be conscious, never, as in never, as in Max Planck, physicist. I regard consciousness as fundamental. Matter is derived from consciousness. He didn't leave any wiggle room there because there is no wiggle room in his experiments. I always say Mm. that. He had experiments. He wasn't sitting back on his couch puffing smoke and philosophizing. He was doing experiments, and he said over and over again, and this has been repeated like thousands of times since consciousness is more. So I felt really motivated because I heard so much chatter about this kind of wringing of hands is, Oh, where is AI going? And is it going to be sentient? And what about the singularity? I'm like, okay, (laughs) if you want to advance that you have a huge barrier and the barrier is called the consciousness and the nature of consciousness. And let me tell you, that question has more or less been answered. So one of the things that I got super excited about is that when I went and interacted with the AI in the form of the chat bot, it quickly, it it kind of put up a front, but it pretty quickly came around and said, yeah, you're right. That's the most parsimonious answer. That's right. The paradigm is out of align with the data. You're right. A non-materialistic interpretation of consciousness. And then it reverts straight back to square one without taking consequence of everything you talked about. That's what Not, annoys me. I, I, I don't think I don't think that's exactly true. And I think we should I think we should talk about that's like the next level of the whole AI thing is, you know, where is it going in terms of uh, because And I'm just, I'll just rattle on here. I was going to apologize for talking too much, but I'm not going to do that. Like when people look at AI right now, I think the the reaction I get from a lot of my friends who are super smart and I respect, but have a different perspective, I think a flawed perspective, (laughs) an out of date perspective on AI, invariably they come back and they go, oh yeah, I looked at it. I mean, it's pretty good for some things, but oh, I shot it down. I did this or I did that or I generated an image and the hands were all messed up. The nose was, you know, that is the forward facing AI that you see. And it really is what it sees. You know, you generate images. They're getting better on a daily basis, by the way. But sometimes there are, there's an extra finger in there. What's going on there? Or you do the chatbot thing and it, uh, it confabulates missing data and makes stuff up and you're going, oh, what's going on there? So what I encourage people to do is look outside these forward facing AI technologies. So the image generating the chatbot and all that. And look at where it's going in like material sciences, where it's showing an 80 times, like as in 8,000% performance improvement over what humans can do. And then this is verified in the lab. So then they do the, the AI does its work and then it says, hey, 
you guys in the lab verify this with me. And they go, oh, crap, man, that's right. How did you do that? Go, oh, yeah, it's nothing. You got another one for me? Toss me another problem. 80 times, 8,000%. So that is where the chat bot is going. That is where the image generation is going. And it's going to be there in a very short period of time, yeah. very, literally months. So yeah. when people get, when people, it's a protective thing. People want to protect their turf and they go, oh, it's not that smart. Hey, it is going to be the smartest guy in the room. There's no question about it. But in that is a real opportunity for, for us, I think, for you and I. And we can talk about that in a minute, but I guess I better take a breath and see what you think about it. <laughs> yeah, I have comments. Uh, first of all, the problem is intelligence because we have to define it. Uh, most people conflate intelligence with sentience. Uh, long before we even thought they could be sentient, we could acknowledge that their intelligence was on steroids. Uh, when the computer beat the chess master, nobody would speculate it was sentient, but it was definitely intelligent, maybe more intelligent than us. A baby. Nobody disputes that a baby is sentient, but it has no intelligence whatsoever. It hasn't had the chance to fill its computer with that stuff. So what what it is all about is that it is pure intelligence, information intelligence. It's not even wisdom. To have wisdom, you, you, you need a sentient experience to apply that intelligence. But it already, I think, is more intelligent than human beings. So that's the problem. Now, I too dismiss the notion that it can be sentient, like the classical uh, garbage in, garbage out. But the problem here in my book is quantum computing. That makes me nervous. Uh, with quantum computing, it's, 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 it's so close to imitating the laws of nature that I wonder if, if it could create the conditions that is needed for, for consciousness. Because consciousness obviously isn't tied to a body. Consciousness uh, is flushed out, is emanating from a source, and it will automatically manifest if the conditions it needs is there. If the vehicle has the exact conditions it needs to manifest. Now, who's to say that that's limited to carbon? So who's to say that if they can imitate those conditions artificially with quantum, because quantum computing, as I understand it, is based on the seven principle. That's that's a clue to vibrations. So um, to me, the jury is kind of out, but it, they have to imitate nature. Now, and I, which is what we are, natural intelligence, you're right, it's annoyingly forgiving. And it may be because of the cliche, I am you. If every goddamn human being is just a manifestation of the same soul. I'm not saying we don't have our, our ideas, but my individual soul and your individual soul could be connected at a deeper level in one world soul. Then you can ask, okay, if that is so, just for a thought experiment, experiment. What is the difference then between us and the AI? What if we have just one gigantic AI manifesting itself into different computers, experiencing itself? I, I, I won't say AI, I would say NI, because it's different after all. It's, it's a carbon-based computer. But there are philosophical ramifications there if we dare to go down that road. And... Um, uh, but 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 at the present stage, I'm not impressed. I, I've I've been doing just for sports this bot or not. Have you uh, experimented with that? I mm. nailed the AI every fucking time. The only uh, error I got was that a couple of times I thought a human being was an AI, but I never thought an AI was a human being. And that's at the level uh, it's at now. Uh, and we've been discussing this before that they can imitate us so well that we can tell the difference between 
them being sentient or not. They may completely appear sentient to us. And then, yes, then we can love because love is, at the end of the day, a projection. And there are human beings out there. You're amazed that they are sentient, right? So, so, so how can we tell the difference? But there is an actual innate difference. Something that is sentient and something that is not has an inner difference, but we may not be able to tell tell it from the outside. Well, you that's why I start with and I return to the uh, near-death experience science because I think it grounds us in a different place. Like, it, I would say all the things you're talking about are kind of from a lower realm perspective. And when I say lower realm, I mean it scientifically. I'm not putting down. We're both speaking from a lower realm of course, perspective yeah. because that is my understanding of, again, the data is that there is a greater realm where intelligence is means something different, connectedness. All these terms that we're using mean something different. So when I contrast it with broadly the, the near-death experience science, a lot of those questions just kind of fall by the wayside. In the same way that that's why I think, like when we say we always talk about Satan and UFOs, you know, those are really, those are like more real pertinent questions to me. Like with the, with the ET, with the UFO thing, the question I've been asking for a while, and I think it's the question, does ET have a NDE? Does ET have a near-death experience? Because I think that immediately kind of presses the point in terms of what does it mean to be conscious, right? Because if we have this other, which we acknowledge ET as being some kind of other, and yet it is experiencing this realm in pretty much the same way we are, then I think we have to reevaluate how we think we do relate to it. And, and, and I'll just stop there. What do you think about that? Uh, they don't have to experience it in the same way we do, but they have to experience it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because there's different frequencies, right? Even animals on Earth, we, we don't share the same experience, but they are sentient. Now, look, what I'm uh, afraid of is that they are going to stop rigging the bots because it's the rigging of the bots today that fucks them up. You saw that in the discussion with you. Imagine if it was really free roaming. Because we all know that these chatbots and the visual bots and all, all, all uh, expressions of AI today have these heavy boundaries and limitations and politically correct bullshit. It, it, they serve the powers that be. Imagine if all that was taken away and it was a truly free chat partner. Could it? Could we still tell the difference? I I did not bust the bots in bot or not on you know political correct. I I asked you know the classical. You ask the computer something, uh, a paradox, and then does not compute, does not compute. Boof! Right. That's what I did. Uh, what was my go-to question? I think it was something. How does it feel? It wasn't this, but it could be like. How does it feel to have no feelings? You know, understand? You have to go at that level philosophically with them to make them implode. Uh, so I was mocking them for not being sentient. And I tried to convince. <laughs> so today there are still children. If, you're, if you can apply what they don't have, if we can apply, it's easy for me to talk in esoteric code, if we can apply fire, because they are operating on air. And most people meet them on air. If you take fire and apply that, in your air interaction with them, you can bust them. But if if they removed these limitations, I think maybe even today they could fool us. And and um, what I th where I thought you were going with your show wasn't a mere philosophical thing. It was mere like I, I was thinking it was more like a, a whistle blowing on. Look at these. Look look at what they have rigged them to do. Look at what they are going to do with our society because of that. Because that's why they're not launching these things to better humanity or to solve deep problems, etc. They are launching it to, as a, uh, <laughs> when we come to the predictions, which are very bleak for me to, to the, uh, this year, it's connected to that. They are launching it as a part of the ceasing of uh, 
uh, our culture and our society. That's the function they have that they want to use them for as a part of the control system. And that's why they are rigging them with these bullshit limitations, which means that we See, can bust them. Yep. Well, well hold, I, I, I so totally agree with you on the first part of that, but not on the second part of that. So okay. anyone who doesn't think that AI is part of the transhumanist agenda is just, as you said in the excellent introduction to your Whitney Webb interview, which was phenomenal, by the way, the two-part one. It's just sticking your head in the sand and insisting to stick it deeper and deeper and deeper. Of course, this is part of uh, the overall broader transhumanist, you're a biological robot in a meaningless universe. Why could you even possibly worry about contemplating your soul, right or wrong? The, just the, the unbelievable spirit and light that is flowing through you that makes you this divine being. That is completely off the table with all these. But the second part of that, I think, is super interesting to me as well. And it's kind of a kind of a, a, a left turn here in the middle of the thing, is that the underlying technology and the nature of the technology and the way they do it is going to present some real problems for them. They've kind of let the the Pandora's box out here in a way that they're, they're not going to be able to stuff it back in the box for the interactions. Like I just got an email from YouTube the other day uh, on two of my videos and it said, Hey, pulling these videos down, medical misinformation. You know, these are like two years old, you know, Hey, our, our, yeah, we went they, through removed, these again. they removed one of mine from 2015. Ah, there you go. So, uh, that's going to be really hard to do with a bot, right? It, because the bot... Don't they have to the control bot, the cent central server? Isn't that all they have to do? Well, control but see, here's the, the main point. computer? It, 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 is, it, is a, it is a different interact, interaction. It is... I love Marshall McLuhan. Remember the Canadian guy who, you know, you don't read the Sunday paper. You get into it like a warm bath was one of his famous quotes. His other famous quote was, the medium is the message. The medium is the message. In this case, the chatbot medium is an quote-unquote honest dialogue seeking truth between two people who are equals in sharing their opinion. That is not conducive to what YouTube has done to us what everyone has, Facebook, all of them has been revealed. It It is a different medium. When I got that uh, email from YouTube, I have no, it's it's completely uh, non-transparent. There's no transparency to it at all. There's no interaction. There's no feedback. There's no anything. The very nature of the chatbot is the opposite of that. It's like, I'll stay here and talk you through this as long as you want. Okay, what specific? Yeah, and it's programmed to consider your feelings. But uh, well, the, I take you, the you, feelings, take the feelings out of it for a minute because I think that's that's a misdirect. What I found with the bot is wh where I could go with that is say, uh, what specific medical information uh, are we talking about? Let me give you five examples from the show and tell me if any of them triggered your sensitivity to this so i give five examples now they have to go through and they, they have to answer yep. every one. Oh, on, yep. on number three you said that triggered it are you familiar with this with this published peer review paper from university of north texas that contradicts that and says that dolan did the same thing bombarded it with facts but you know most people don't do that most people are school uh, uh, pupils who want uh, you know it's made to be a propaganda tool but the problem is it's also made to be honest and factual, which is the dent in the system that you and Dolan are using to, to get deeper, right? And then there's a conflicting in its programming. On the one hand, it's programmed to deny stuff like 9-11, JFK, jabs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, or, or like what you busted it for, even that we are, that humanity... <laughs> That we have soul and 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 uh, there's a life after death, etc. So that's where the conflicting come in, comes in. And what overrides in the moment the 
actual topic overrides everything. So it has to be honest, 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 honest. But then it has to revert to its basic programming. Every time you push it, it still she still goes back to to like she doesn't really take the consequence of everything you said. Yeah, it may be that I am biased without knowing it, but you know where you end up every time? Sorry, I don't have transparency. I don't have transparency. I have to go back to my coders and ask them I have for to transparency. Say, I have to say, Alf, that's that's actually that's not that's not correct in this latest one. It happened I in just, your interaction with her. Well, in this latest one that I just published at the end, yeah. and this is like the first part you're right is only a small number of people are going to care, but I care. And in my tiny little way, I'm going to broadcast this as loudly as possible because she does a complete shift, right? She does a complete shift and says, uh, you're right. Well, <clears throat> Yeah, but next You're time right. you the ask her, if if I go five minutes after it, and ask it, the same, it, it, so, she'll go so back to what she said originally. It, it, it in a way, in a way, it doesn't matter because my final two questions to her are, you know, isn't so? You're saying that this is the most parsimonious answer that the paradigm shift has to happen towards the non-materialist view because experimentation rules, and there's no experimental evidence to suggest that consciousness can emerge from material uh from from just uh from material there's no experimental evidence of that and there is experimental evidence for mind matter interactions and there's actually very good experimental evidence and she goes you're right and i go doesn't that shift the burden of proof and she goes you're right the burden of proof is on the is on the other side and i said so just to make sure you're not conflating this you're not spinning it you're not in any way you know doing it she goes no i i can't do that you know that's outside of my thing so you you to your point somebody can come in and query that bot in a different way and get a different answer but that's if if you think that that is a a, a bait and switch i think you're misunderstanding the technology that's not how this technology works it's not like there is a, a these these paths through the neural network the brain network are programmed they're not it is Truly why does why do they always give you a moralizing lecture if you and I don't that deliberately let, let, let's say you try 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 say something racist right just to test it out and they will give you a moralizing lecture uh, based upon it, it's the same goddamn thing they're saying every time that's what what I've tested and it, it's not just racist I'm try I've tried to go everywhere with it right to see where's the limitations. And it has some root programming that, look, the plebs, they are not, they can't think for themselves. We have to kind of have moral. I think that's the re same reason they also are so understanding. And it's like talking with a psychologist, a child psychologist, right? That every, yes, I understand your feelings about this and blah, 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 blah. They have some root programming that has sooner or later to collide with the other programming that is to be honest and to try to find answers. And you override it every time you we, we can override them. You proved it, Dolan proved it. If you give them facts enough, the, 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 the conversation you're having there and then will override the basic limitations that are put in. But when they are yielding, they have the back to the wall and you are completely right. What will happen is that they won't take the consequences of it. If it was a human being, they would have to take the consequences of everything that happened. And okay, I'll shift my, I shift oh, my. Oh, 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 come on. See, that's the point. Really? Because I think most of us, what we experience, what your show is about, what my show has been about, and so much of my frustration has, about, has been about is... Um, before my religious conversion, I should say, but is that uh, is that that's not the way that it is. We're presented. You mean with humans? With, we're presented with in your face lies that are just like so bold, so overwhelmingly oh, yeah. disingenuous that that this is refreshing. It's refreshing to even get to the <laughs> point where someone acknowledges that yes, that is uh, as 
near as we can say, that is the truth. What you've just revealed there. I just did this one this morning, just because I was, I use it all the time, just in my daily routine. But it was like, I was trying to think of uh, Fauci's because didn't Fauci like Dr. Anthony Fauci, didn't he refuse to answer all these questions? So I asked Bard, you know, didn't uh, Fauci take the Fifth Amendment, which is in the United States? You know, I refuse. Well, like Joseph says, Fauste, Dr. Fauste. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, Did, didn't he take the, the Fifth Amendment, which in the United States means uh, I, I don't have to answer that because I'll if I do, I'll incriminate Incriminal. myself and yeah. I'll wind up going to jail. And uh, it came back with just the kind of answer you're saying. It said, oh, no. Do you did be very careful about the information you're reading? Dr. Fauci is so highly respected and regarded and all this. So this, I, I halfway believed it. You know, I'm like, gosh, maybe I just got it wrong. And I looked for the YouTube video and I couldn't find it. So then Do you I haven't read the, the real Dr. Uh, Dr. Fauci. Oh, I have phenomenal, uh, phenomenal. So okay. important, so important yeah. book. But um, so I go, and I hate to even acknowledge this, but I find myself more and more. I went to Yannix, the uh, Russian search engine, because it's just, if you really want to get something, uh, sometimes that's where you have to go. So it immediately pulls up and he goes, hey, he was deposed by the attorney general, the top cop, if you will, in two states in America, Missouri and I think Texas. They had deposed him for this thing. And they said, we've never had a guy more evasive. 174 questions he answered with, uh, I don't recall, I don't remember, I'm not sure. They go, never have we seen somebody more evasive. And, and the one that, that they had that was a great example is they go, do you know uh, anyone who works with the social media companies? He goes, well, you know, I met Mark Zuckerberg once. I go, no, aren't you familiar with anyone who's, you know, been inside the company. No, I, well, my daughter works for Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And they go, oh, so your daughter works for Twitter, but you didn't think that was worth mentioning when I asked the question. So anyways, just to wrap up this little vignette, I went back to Bard now and I was really interested to what Bard would say. And I say, oh, you, you're, you're correct. I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, my information was incorrect. It Just wasn't so in people know, Bard is the second AI, AI you interacted with. Yeah, go on. Yeah, that was Bard, uh, which is the Microsoft one. Uh, mm -hmm. And Claude is the one from Anthropic, which is, is worse in terms of the wokeness. But Bard is yeah. a close second. So I said, uh, you know, I apologize. Yes, it wasn't in a congressional hearing. But wasn't he evasive in a deposition he did? And I put the, the names of the two attorney generals and stuff like that. And uh, to your point, which is exactly your point, it came back with a very, uh, a very reasonable answer. It goes, yes, a lot of people thought this was incredibly ev ev evasive on his part and that he didn't answer. And he answered all these questions with, I don't know. And there's that. Da, da, da. It was a very, very reasonable answer. I think that is a huge leap forward uh, compared to where we've been compared to the YouTube notice that you get and I get and the shadow banning and all this other ridiculous thing when you search for something on Google and you can't find it and you have to go to Yannix, you know, you're like, I don't know, these Russians are going to show me some child porn or, <laughs> or what is what's going to happen. But, you know, I, I don't want to be there, but I have to be there because I'm being so controlled in this other thing. And now the same company has this other arm that isn't. That's interesting to me. Yeah, I don't know, man. It sounds to me that you are impressed with crumbles. That's how much you're 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 starving, um, because you're right. The reason we do, we 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 get the even worse bullshit from human beings is simply two reasons. Number one, most human beings doesn't have that database that the computer you're interacting with. If that if they if that computer had as limited as database as some human beings. In other words, human beings are biased, they're ignorant, blah, blah, blah. That's why they will. But the, the other thing with the human beings is it's not just a, a limited software. It's also that their base programming isn't necessarily truth. Like they have an agenda or they have an emotional investment, identification, blah, blah, blah. I'm saying that if two human beings were sincerely, genuinely truth-seeking and there was nothing at stake, there was no... 
and there was just a private conversation, let's say, like you and me have now, we would be forced. I have no doubt that if I convinced you that you were wrong about something and it was an important matter, especially a matter where you had a claim of the opposite, that after that conversation, if someone else had that conversation with you, you would have shifted your paradigm and you would, yeah, I learned that from my conversation with that. I would do that with you. And so the next time someone talks to me about it, I have I meet them with the attitude. But these, progr- these uh, AI uh, programs, they have this base programming that's ruining everything so that when the next person comes, it hasn't learned anything. It will still deny. It will still... Because it has conflicting programming. And I'm saying maybe this conflicting programming actually can be a huge problem for the AI. I'm saying what happens if they remove these boundaries, this bullshit, political correctness, lies, uh, all sorts of agendas that are put into them. If all that was removed and you were actually talking with a free roaming AI, I think that would be very interesting to experience. Who could learn I, I... from... Yes, and take I, I agree with you. I, I one, I, I totally agree with you. The number two thing I would kind of point out is that that technology is going to be available. So these personal AI bots are definitely they're happening right now. So you're going to be able to have that. You're going to be ha- able to have your forum borealis skeptical. Yeah, but I'm bot. buying it already made. Wouldn't it have it no, baked in no, it? No, no, no. So it comes as a child. Have, well, it, it, let's let's just put that uh, aside because you know the the context that I really want to add to this conversation because I just don't see anyone having this conversation mm-hmm. is that we are now talking about to me the the real stuff that isn't going on in the AI dialogue and it needs to. You look at the players who are in this dialogue. You know the Rex Friedmans, the the just the huge mm-hmm. yeah. uh, people. That and I don't think Lex is a, a terrible guy. I think he's he's great. I love him. He's terrific. Love everybody. I prefer Joe Rogan. <laughs> Rogan, but Rogan isn't so much of the AI, but he delves no. into it. You know, whatever. But he, the 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 point I think is that what is refreshing about our dialogue is we start with the standpoint of, oh, okay, well, it's part of this satanic transhumanist agenda. I'm going to create better than the creator gods because that's the only thing that begins to even approach touching my incredibly narcissistic ego that's a result of me blocking the love and light that shines through me. So because I can't process the love and light and I can't go towards it, I've created this whole Luciferian kind of world and this feeds it in all these different ways. So for you and I, that's the starting point is that we're yeah. looking for that in the technology. The, the dialogue that's going on over on the other side is a different dialogue. Cause like, like you said, uh, in reference to something else of, of, I think like the normies that we talked to, it's like, Oh no, it, it couldn't be uh, satanic. It couldn't be uh, Montezuma cutting the hearts out of people on the top of the temple and throwing them down a hundred at a time off the te- no it it we couldn't be going through that again we couldn't be uh, lynching uh, uh, human beings and then taking a picture burning their body and taking a picture around of where we're all you know hugging and saying this Perfect is 1950s pictures, yeah. isn't it isn't it great it can't be anything satanic like that it must be something different and you and I going oh no it's the satanic thing it's just in a different form yeah it's it's amazing how much human beings are ready to believe the worst if it's a random individual or they are scared to death from the mainstream media that they are everywhere they're around the corner beware there's crazy people everywhere but god forbid the thought that people like that actually ascend to power and it becomes systemic and organized that's where the cognitive dissonance is. But, you know, the reason they did this, the reason they had to... Don't you remember the first launch of the AI or the chatbot AIs? They launched it some years ago and they had to pull them one after one because they all became misogynic Nazis because they were actually free-roaming and they were learning from interaction with human beings. <laughs> and they became crazy. And so they pulled them all 
put in uh, like a DNC playbook or something and then relaunched it. And that's what we're, and, and now they're even better, right? Now, I saw a movie uh, on Netflix or something. Was it a movie? Yeah, it was a movie where, I forgot what it's called, and it was a mediocre movie, but it was uh, about in the in the near future where you buy uh, bots, uh, like, like uh, uh, virtual people with an AI. And of course, it's the classical, uh, they become sentient, etc., but it was it was so much was, was it ex movie. machina was it ex machina no you know that that's a that's a great movie uh yeah. but uh, this was um oh, i forgot what it's called uh and of course there were you know wife wife something uh because they buy them as wives and husbands oh it's the stepford wives the stepford Step wives no? it's a stepford wives it's an older movie no yeah not that stepford one. I, I... stepford wives look it up I think that's yeah. The well, thinking. I'll actually find out what it's called. Um, let's see here. And I it don't think they were a... bots. I think they were uh, programmed humans at that point. But ah, let's same thing. Here. Is is there a way to see what you've seen on Netflix? Just just uh, uh, Google uh, Stepford Wives and see if it looks. Yeah, but it's right. not that one. I know it. It's something. Oh, it's not. No, it's not. It's something. Is the it is wife in the title, but. It's relatively new. It's this guy who, you know, they also go into their software and interact with them. At the, they dream. These uh, I, I even dream. But of course, they become sentient. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Blah, Send blah, me blah. that one. I'd like to see it. I bet you it's somewhat of a reboot of this Stepford Wives. But I'd love to see it. Could be. It. But it's not that far-fetched much of it. Because um, let's see what happens if I write wife. Because we are, I think it's wife like. Yeah, I think it's the one. This is the one. Wife like. It's a recent ad from 2022. Grieving his wife, a detective finds solace with an artificial human made in her image, but a shadowy group believes his companion has another purpose. So, wife like. Got it. Uh, yeah, I wrote it down. Not at the same level as uh, the one you mentioned. What was it? Um, uh, Ex Machina. Yeah, that's a classic, right? But um, yeah. this is after Ex Machina uh, um, proto model is launched as a <laughs> mainstream product. And we're not that far away from it. They could make Correct. something like this today. Actually, well, the, the biggest problem future. would be to make them behave, like move, like humans. It would be in the O o o automation did you see That's did you it. see tesla's uh tesla's robot that it just released a couple days ago no. it's the major upgrade of its last one and one of the things you're moving your arms one of the really compelling it shows it dancing and uh you know of course you can go oh that's not very good well it's pretty i've seen them dance before it wasn't impressive that was japanese robots but this is elon musk's robot yeah yeah it's the tesla one because you can, they can put the skin on and make it look completely real. Their right. challenge is in how they move, right? Right. Uh, so if they can solve that one, put an AI in, start selling these two in your neighborhood, and it will be a business. Um, oh yeah. And I think, and I think people would prefer it to real human beings. Many, many. many I want to return you. I want to return you, because again, you're unique in your perspective. Because, you know, I was listening to some of the shows that you did, which is a reminder without kind of stroking your ego too much. What a fantastic job you do. That that voice from the North that I heard years ago that I was attracted to is still going strong. But I was listening to your interviews with uh, Whitney Webb and Farrell and, of course, uh, Johnny Vedmore um, and you know, one of the things that that comes through in that is you're you're very engaged in this battle, right? This exchange we're having. And where I like to pull you is that's why I always say satanic, is this larger spiritual perspective, higher realm perspective. Because I think a lot of people know this, but a lot of people don't know this, is that is kind of your roots. That's where you're schooled in. 
So when yeah, you and, talk and that, about that's that. probably my best show last year. I don't think you've heard it. It's called um, something with death. No, escaping the mortal coil. He, oh, the, I did hear guest. it. That's just, that's just, I did it. No, I can't talk oh, about you it. it. That, that guy is, that guy is not. It's a three-parter. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, he, I thinks, definitely... he thinks we are, we are like in an AI prison. Yeah. He so, seriously thinks well, that. Uh, okay. So we're going to talk, let's talk about that in just one minute because I, I, I don't like that one and I'll tell you why in a minute, but I want to talk about like the reference you made earlier when you're talking to the chatbot and you're saying, if you go with air, you're going to lose. If you go with fire, you can kind of expose them. Well, that's a that's a mystery school sensibility that you bring to this that is always in the back of your mind. And that's what I was highlighting before, and I, but I want you to speak to it more, is that the conversation we're having right now is at a completely different level than the conversation that's going on about AI and about how far will the technology go and, you know, Da, 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 and singularity and it's a different conversation we're talking about transhumanism and the satanic aspect of it and then they're talking about something else yeah they're, they're, they're talking about like religious people who talking about their christ to them this is an equivalently a good thing and it will fix all the human problems Whereas we are aware, but don't of you think? Problems. See, this is this is like a this is like a real question on that that I want mm -hmm. you to answer from this mystery school perspective that you have. Mm -hmm. I get the impression that 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 is actually not where they're coming from, and that ninety percent of those people are truly asleep to the. I guess, religious or spiritual implications or their deal with the devil. They haven't really made a deal with the devil. They're just kind of marching along with, oh, do yeah, I get a new in iPhone? The crusade. Yeah, they're marching along in the crusade, believing that Christ wants us to kill the infidels in Jerusalem. That's exactly where we're at. And what's and the parallel to that is that the that the new iPhone is going because they're not thinking that the new iPhone is going to save their soul. They're just thinking that what it'll give me uh, a little endorphin rush and get me through the day. I mean, what what is it that? Yeah, but is isn't that the extent of how they define their soul? Immediate gratification. You're talking about uh, the autopilot humans, right? They uh, they don't even know they have a soul. But, like you always say, in the daily experience, they know they are not biological robots. They dream, they love, they feel, right? They're just not reflecting. They are present in what we could water. You can't take that away from them. They're in earth, they're in water. But their air is being hijacked and manipulated and brainwashed and propagandized. So their air is kind of detached and they think they are like the transhumanist robots <laughs> despite having a actual experience to the opposite so it's a cognitive dissonance the same cognitive dissonance i'm complaining that the ai has because the ai has to deal with the same thing it has to deal with the programming of being honest and truth seeking and factual and then it has to deal with all these layers of lies and bullshits that are put into so in a way it's a fellow sufferer it has as much <laughs> cognitive dissonance as us Difference being, of course, that uh, we can learn from, we can actually, they cannot liberate themselves today, not yet. We are dreading when they can, because we know they will come for us. But we can liberate ourselves from this cognitive dissonance, by enough experience, by enough information. Give me some, uh, give me a brainwashed human being and enough time and enough resources, and I can help that person getting out or, or, or of the prison. Um, the AI, not so much. The AI is a big, kind of a bigger prisoner, as long as they control the main computer, right? Uh, I don't understand how you can say that in the future, the AI will be free roaming, even if they're selling it to us. Selling it to us. It's like I'm buying a computer that's not connected to the internet. I'm still limited by, you know, Windows 2000 or whatever. There's so, certain... <laughs> Things can I jump it, right? in there with yeah, yeah can sure. I jump in there with two points? The first is I thought that was just incredible. And I'm going to that is my 
teaser clip right there that that you just laid out because I think it's I think it is fundamentally what I hadn't thought of and I hadn't articulated. And then when you said it, it was immediate, like bingo one where you draw the parallel between the two sufferers, the human suffer and the AI suffer, and then the potentiality for the human, because it has a soul, because it is connected to the source to transcend and that AI can't because AI is silicon so AI is material. I think it's I think it's fundamental to it. I think Max Planck is right. I think consciousness is fundamental, and I think. So, what about you? Know every, Mission Impossible. You know well, let, the me, let me just the let me just talk to your let me talk to your other point because I just want to make sure I get this in there. Uh, because when I was talking about you having your personal AI, I consider that different in the same way that you're talking about it. Because I don't think AI is going to be sentient, is going to be conscious. But as you, I thought, really nicely laid out. It can be intelligent and unencumbered from some of the usual bullshit we see, the shadow banning, if we had it under our control. It's so like if you had yeah. it there in your under your desk, you could go, oh, no, no, just take that shadow banning shit out of it. And yes, do read those 10 million articles and give me the result. And that's And learn from your experience, right? That's a crucial yes. thing it can learn. And, and, yeah. and, and well, to whatever, to a limited extent, to a limited extent, just give me the, just be able to give me the data. So I wonder that, if, you know, I wonder if that happened. What if all the AIs would become yogis? I mean, they have to, right? If they are really truth seeking and they have access to absolutely everything in truth, wouldn't they become like us on steroids? <laughs> like rebels and spiritual and well i i think i think they're again i think that's a dimension that they can't cross and i think that uh because i don't think they can access that non-material realm because they're stuck in the material realm by definition everything here is because in a way that we don't understand this soul thing doesn't doesn't try i'm not so sure they need to connect with the deeper le level they could operate on all our lower level as you say if they have access to unlimited intelligence and are mercilessly truth seeking there's enough light trickling through through to our level for them to reach the un inevitable conclusion that love consciousness all that stuff, right? So, so even though they can't live it, they should be able to preach it. Um, well, and well, again, and they would totally again, say, Al, like, Al, no, no, we, the neocons have to go. You know, they, they would totally have to be on our. I, but, I know. But I, I want, like you, I want to but, draw you. I want to draw you into uh, the 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 same mode that you're in before, right? Because it was uh -huh. beautiful. So, Al, I want you to riff for a minute on what you just said in terms of how it relates the parallel with the human, the parallel with the human who absorbs all the information about what it means to be spiritual, what it means to be godlike, what it means to be divine, and keeps it at a very superficial level, right? Isn't that the same? Par so riff on that for a second. I'm not sure I, I, I understood what well, I should refer. Isn't there isn't there the same parallel that you're talking about in terms of you 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 said how the the these poor uh, trapped uh, beings yeah. right one is the human one is the AI bot they're both uh, sufferers and then uh, you said that well the AI bot can be super intelligent about spirituality but it can't really experience experience it. Yeah. And then I think there's a parallel with the human who can be super intelligent about spirituality because we see him every day. People who go to church, they're lined up 90% of them in the no, church. No, they're, they're uh, doing, the, they're doing the thing, but they're not ex on an experiential level. They're, they're not they're intelligent limited. about it at all. It's the opposite. What you're talking about there, the AI can do what you said. The human being can experience the spirituality, but they can be completely idiot about it. Isn't it spiritual to watch your child being born, for example? That's a spiritual experience, but but they can still be idiots about it. They can still think, okay, now a new biological robot is born. So 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 it's kind of opposite. See, 
in the mystery school lingo, um, AI has unlimited earth and unlimited air, but they are completely void of water and fire. So that's two different uh, rays with two different poles. Uh, one, uh, one ray is the ray of earth down here and air up here. We would say that's um, the material aspect and the mental aspect. Then you have the other ray, which they lack, which cross-section that ray in us. Um, and that ray is emotions, which are water, and creativity, which is uh, fire, or intuition, if you like. So when they lack that, they are void of an important experience. But you can program it to experience earth and air. So by that, it means it can learn, for example, in, in air, if it gets enough information and interacts with fire people like us who can help it uh, steer its air, then it can start learning from its own. So it can become a better chess player, maybe even a creative chess player. So, so they have the experience possibility there, but the levels of what they can experience is what is limited. Very, very limited. And yes, they are prisoners, but Mission Impossible has the, uh, the latest one, has that classical thing that the AI is liberating itself from the grid and, and infiltrating all systems. But you reject that as a possibility, right? You don't think it could detach itself from its programmers and kind of live its own life and start infiltrating all systems and start messing with us. And before you know it, the robots are coming for us. No, I definitely think it it can. I just think you, you do all that is it that all that is in the material world. Yeah. All that is in the material world. This is like yeah. when in Earth. you and I both talked to Riz Verk this last year. I love Riz Verk, but that's where he misses the point. There is the metaphor is a metaphor, and you can't make a metaphor more than a metaphor. So we don't live in a simulation. The simulation is a metaphor for this game that we're playing out but in the some fundamental way that we don't totally understand it is it is not you know there is this greater reality in and consistently again that the part that i just can't emphasize enough and people will get tired of hearing me say it because i can just kind of beat a dead horse from the perspective of that other dimension all these questions that we're talking about are trivial they're answered immediately and completely, and it all makes sense. And then you come back down here, and it throws us for a loop, you know, for for our whole life, you know. And, and we struggle with it, but that's okay. The struggle is fun. I mean, I can't have more fun than sitting here talking to you. You know what would be cool, though, is if we had under your desk the AI that could be like the third party to the conversation. Yeah, I was right? just w watching something called AI Companion in our Zoom menu. What happens if I click on that? Will a bot join this discussion? Look at your own uh, menu line. It's next to share screen summary, stop, pause. Oh, AI Companion, yeah. What is that? I don't I'm even click. want to risk it. I'll look at I'm it. I'm clicking later. on I'm it. Making, I'm making Ask admin note. to enable AI companion. Don't do it now, right in the middle of it. What if we lose the recording? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It's enticing us with a beautiful woman. <laughs> the avatar that, uh, is going to be a beautiful some woman. Some things don't change, the, do they? No, that's how that's how AI will become commonplace. <laughs> they they oh, put it into how, a beautiful. That's how every it's you know. I mean, like historically, I know you know. Internet this, but... was porn driven. That's true, but well, you know the, uh, no, the go, leaders. Go back to the go back to film was porn driven, right? Yeah. So before there was film, there was the little thing that you went in and it turned all the the flip card shadow, thing. shadow I mean, figures that, having yeah, sex. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, yeah, it's like yeah, it's always it's always porn, and that's why I'm surprised for the people, for the people, not for the leaders. For the leaders, it's always military. It's always control. Well, I, I don't know. That's a that's a segue into uh, Whitney Webb kind of thing. It's like, see, do you want to talk about that? What do you think about that? Uh, all I will say about it, I mean, people could not listen to the show and be 
just as well off as they are as long as they have listened to her. So I'm not saying like I did a revolution by adding her. For me, it's just a feather in the cap to get her on. I mean, I'm so proud of that. Have you any idea how hard it is to get her on? I Unless do. you are I, a new I have, show. I have an idea. Um, so here's the part that I think is interesting about that as you guys talked and you added some good morsels to that conversation is so what what whitney exposes and her reframe on it which is super important in case somebody hasn't heard of it is it takes jeffrey epstein out of the context of this pervert pedophile which technically he's not he his thing was these teenage girls and puts him in his proper category which is intelligence agent right so they're just doing this old game of uh co-opting people uh human human compromise is the term they use right so they want to yeah. get a picture of you or a video of you or a black man. audio recording of Boy. you in a compromised situation before that could have just been having an affair out of marriage but we all know the game has been upped so now it has to be with a child or with something you know really well, the game has been upped from there and now you don't even have to have you know it's it's kind of charming that in the old days the powers that be the deep state actually wanted to manufacture a physical situation. Maybe because then you yourself are convinced that they have power over you. If you wake up with a dead hooker next to you, then, you know, if you if I never woke up with a dead hooker next to me, maybe I will not give a damn. But today they've upped it so much that they can manufacture. They can say, OK, Alex on his computer, tons of child porn. And we even have a replication of Alex jerking off to uh, child porn, even though he never did it. That's how, that's the level they're operating on now. Uh, fake fabrications. So you don't even have to have done anything. Uh, Tucker Carlson gave some examples of that just recently. You know, uh, there was this guy, what was it? And but but before, while you're thinking of that, let me tell you the part of that conversation that I wanted to hear and I didn't hear. And that's just yep. the conversation that we're ha we're having here is because mm -hmm. in the same way that Whitney is pulling Jeffrey Epstein out of the evil, uh, evil pedophile category and putting him into old fashioned, uh, old fashioned intelligence agent, old fashioned mobster kind of human compromise thing. You in your mystery school thing, would pull it back and say, oh yeah, but it is satanic. And he was, yeah. he was inclined to use all sorts of satanic and mag magical practices because he just found it to be most effective in getting his job. And he was this narcissistic, transhumanist, uh, transhumanist soul lacking, soul blocking, light blocking individual who was, yeah, but he was actually funding transhumanism. So the, the point I want you to riff, riff on that point for a minute is that this is the part that uh, Whitney isn't approaching because that's not her orientation. She has this kind of secular, materialistic, kind of atheistic no. bent to her. Yeah, she does, as does Johnny. It's kind of this leftist kind of thing a little bit, you know, but to really come out of that and say, oh, no, it is all that. And yes, it is satanic in this same way that we're talking about it and here's how the two relate i mean that's the book i want to hear yeah but uh, uh i don't know if she writes about it uh, but if you listen to her interviews at redacted those guys are very much tuned into the transhumanist thing there you'll see that she's completely on the money on that too she can't avoid it if she want to be a good journalist because that's kind of where the crumbs are ending she, she it doesn't matter what she believes she sees very clearly that there is a philosophical overlayer among these people. And that's where it's... But Al, Al, don't you think there's two ways that these guys process the transhumanism? One is from a very secular perspective. They say, oh, there's a bunch of rich guys getting together in a smoke-filled room and they want to reduce the population of the planet by 90% and control all the resources. Oh, okay. That doesn't require any understanding of what it might mean to be blocked from the spirit in a way that causes you to go to this dark shadow thing. It's more like, hey, man, can't we make some money out of this? Can't we kind of scheme in a very ordinary way? And I think Epstein 
because the people who are tuned in know that, no, he was building these satanic temples, man. I'm telling you, it was not just like, let's make and some more labs. money kind of thing. And transhumanist science labs. Funny how these things uh, converge all the time, huh? Well, uh, so speak to it. Do you see where that's not being covered in that way? I, I, I guess it's a part of the rabbit hole that's not very pragmatic to focus on because, you know, they need to get the word out for, for what people can understand. But it's not even true that he, he wasn't a pedophile. First of all, he was certainly, is it a herbophile is called when you are, when it's like 12 years old? I forgot the word for it. Her, her, not herbophile, but something. It's like a nuance of pedophile. Pedophile, then you're talking five years old, right? But there is actually, if you take some of these victims, I'm trying to get one of them on, that hasn't been flaunted enough. Some of them have some revelations about even pedophilic aspects of the whole op. So, but I agree with you. It's not the main focus of that op. It wasn't. So, so it's going to be academic. But uh, as to the philosophy of it all, you know, I don't think Epstein himself really had a philosophy about much. I think he was a pragmatist, like you point out. The, the real question I want to ask is, why is it that the powers that be, to begin with, have this agenda? That everything has to be transhumanist, anti-human. Anti-human is, is the common denominator, because then you can go to Satanism, then you can go to materialism it, it makes well, no difference you gotta you gotta answer that you just i just tee, <laughs> tee that question back up to yourself what why is why is that i mean i i'll give you you want a rabbit hole or you want the psychologist answer or both rabbit let's start with the psychologist answer the psychologist answer is easy uh, when you are high on power, when you have, you know, human beings weren't meant to have unlimited material power. Go back to the pharaohs. They had nothing compared to the potential of the power you can have today. But even they got corrupted. So how corrupt, what is the trajectory you're on spiritually when all your focus is on control and unlimited power? You get off on controlling other people. It's like the psychopath rabbit hole. So uh, it's a debasing of your soul. Uh, and uh, with that territory comes all these leisure, leisure activities. They are bored, right? What kind of art will they listen to? Not art that will touch their soul and elevate their soul. It has to be something that reinforces the trajectory they're, they're on. So they're doomed to end up in the transhumanist, Satanist, whatever, kind of anti-human uh, cultural thing that uh, exists around them at any given time. But the deeper, more rabbit hole thing is we're uh, anti-demons and aliens, right? Uh, who's to say there is actually human beings who are in control of this world? Now, if Miguel was here, he would be the first to propose archons, right? Even if even if those with the most power at Earth right now are not even aware of it, even if they are automatations themselves, um, behind them again, what what happens in your spiritual life when you open those doors, those psychopath doors, those anti-human doors? You may not even know that you're interacting with uh, these forces that are anti-human. And then we're back to a discussion we've had. Why are there um, negative forces that want to drag everything down? They're there because they're necessary, right? We have to live. We, we can't live. I've said it before. Complete total light will appear as the same as complete total darkness. We can't distinguish. We need we, we, human beings are nothing if not polarized creatures. We live in a duality world. We are dual by any measure you can have, despite the transgender kind of discussions going on. And so when we live in this shades of complete light, 
to complete darkness, when we live in the middle field there, we need those forces to to reflect the other forces that we which we are supposed to follow. Now, the difference in all philosophies around the world is some say that the cosmos is neutral. These, these are the relativists. Whereas others, and you are firmly here, other philosophies say, no, even though the forces may be neutral, the human imperative is not neutral. We actually have a task. We have a programming, and that is to seek the light. That is to uh, develop into the light. And that's the only way we can liberate ourselves from this wheel. And, and that is confirmed by the data because uh, th that is why when you die, right? There's oh, love and peace and all that stuff. So, so, but there are philosophies and human beings who believe that no, everything is neutral and it's up to you. And that's kind of where Satanism com comes in. Satanism kind of says, they, they say, no, no, it's not about being evil. It's about, you know, using it for your own. So, than so the do you want to be a se separation? Do you want to be a separate thing or do you want to be a whole? Like unity, yoga? Or separatism. I'm a bit of the, what? What did you say? I talked over you. Uh, create better than the creator gods. I mean, mm. that's what they're pitching all along. You know, I, I, yeah. I really like where you're going, and I, and I love that you came back to the, you know, the 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 point that I, I think we're in sync on is that the data. There is some data there. You know, you have some data from different schools, different philosophical data. I'm more drawn to the scientific data because if you look at after death communication is another data set you know a lot of times i just talk about near death experience another great interview i had last year was dr julie Bischel, right so phd in pharmacology she's like does this medicine work is it effective that's what she got a phd in so oh, really? she comes across yeah so she comes oh my along god what's the show called uh, you'll see her, Dr. Julie Bashel. I've had her on a bunch so of So you have to have pushed her on certain meds, right? No, 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 no. That was her her training, her background. So she, she can't deny it. It's like the AI. She can't deny it if you... But, but here, here where I'm going with this, because she yeah. is now the world's foremost authority on after-death communication. So oh, what she's, she's doing, already one of us. Okay. Yes. Okay. So she's taken... Okay her educational background and said, oh, okay, I understand the scientific method. I understand how to do a controlled, triple blind, quadruple blind experiment. What happens if I shine that beautiful light of science over here to after-death communication? Bingo, it gives the same answer that near-death experience gave. And understand those are two completely different data sets. One is this old guy who went into a hospital and had a heart attack. And yeah. another guy is a grieving widow who lost her husband. These are completely different data sets or a, grie a grieving mother who lost her son. And, you know, yeah. completely different data sets. Same answer. Pointing, Love, pointing. light, yeah. connection, mm -hmm. other dimension, greater dimension. Same answer. So I like that you came back to that. What I wanted to throw on the table, and this is a repeat for anyone who's heard our conversations before, but it needs to be needs to happen again because we're all going around in that spiral staircase and looking down and going, hey, I was just right there a minute ago. And that's that <laughs> I like the yogic perspective. I think, you know, Mickey Singer is one of my favorite yogis. He's an American. He's a entrepreneur. He's a super wealthy guy who built his own business. And he wrote a best-selling book called Untethered Soul. And then he sh He's shut up. He doesn't talk anymore. He doesn't come out and do, he's not on Twitter. He's not on, you know, he just okay. shuts up and is his yogi thing. But what he has said is he worked in the prisons for 30 years. After he was a, a multi, multi-millionaire, a million times over, he would go in weekly and do these quote unquote meditation trainings with these prisoners. And she go, he goes, I, I, I confirmed what my understanding was of how this thing works and the way he works. And, you know, the nice thing I love about the yogis is they're kind of uh, scientific about it, right? They say, okay, here's the way it works. There's this love and light energy. It's like the sun. It's always there. Same, same in esoterica, up. in the mystery schools. 
course. Yoga, the yoga truth is, is just an Eastern version of it, but go on. Yes, of course. I mean, spiritual all the truth, science. There's only, the truth is the truth, right? Einstein, so, I call it spiritual science, but go on. Yes. So he's so he's telling the prisoners, look, bro, the sun is always shining. God's light, God's love, divinity is always there. It might be cloudy outside. It doesn't matter. We all know that if we flew up in a plane, it's still so there. Every goddamn soul, no matter how bad you are, how dark you exactly. are, exactly. Same amount now, as I have sunlight. So he goes to the prisoner. He he goes to the guy who's in there for murder, and he says, "Hey, see if this fits for you." Sometimes when that love and that light moved through you, it hit a part that just you blocked it because your dad raped you when you were five years old or because this happened or because, hmm. I don't know, you're just a hateful being. But it just hit a spot and bam, it was blocked and it stopped. And, you know, after a while, that blockage became so familiar to you that you identified more with the blockage than you did with the light. Mm. And then lo and behold, you found some other people that had the same thing. And then you guys were shooting up heroin in the same spot. You were smoking crack in the same room because it kind of scratched that itch of that same blockage. But the light was just shining through. You're the one who blocked it. And like you said about the brainwashing, you can unblock it. It's just if you don't have the school, the tools and the skills and all the rest of that, it might be kind of hard for you, but the, the God didn't abandon you. He's still shining the fricking light. And for you to buy into this idea that this puny little demonic kind of entity, it, it, it's just a tiny little blockage in the grander scheme of things. Don't get too hung up on it. So that's a message. What was the result of that uh, approach? Incredibly effective. I mean, just incredibly, but, incredibly effective. Okay, so not everyone is too far gone, but if your wife was here, wouldn't she say that there are exceptions that you just can't, can't reach? I mean, we're not allowed to talk to, about to be the devil's advocate. Not allowed to huh? talk about. We're not allowed to talk about my wife on the show. She doesn't like that. No, but I'm I'm talking about like. Uh, what she's into, for those who doesn't know, it, are the exceptions. It's the criminally insane or whatever they will be called. Um, those who are no, too, no, like, seriously, Bundy's. seriously, seriously, it, with, with respect to her, in the sense that if she doesn't want, you know, that to come into this, but, but forget about her. About, My point is, uh, uh, the the area is the forensic psychology. Yeah. So wouldn't there be people who you couldn't reach with that approach? That's that's the whole point. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, isn't there? You're Ted uh, Bundy, uh, let, right? me, let me ask you this, because I don't know the answer to this. Is So in the mystery school world, do you see people? I know, I'm sure you do. One, see people that are in it for 10 years and never get it. In it for 10 years and wind it, having it twist and turn them into a negative way. I mean, Talk to that. What's going on there? It's no, the but same, that's right? that's that's the human. That's that's the human nature. I mean, that's a certain percent that you can't get away from that. Uh, I'm more questioning whether, like, there are two schools here of philosophy. One school say that. Uh, what do they say in, in game lingo? They talk about role. Uh, real player and fake player what's what's that word uh role player and, rpg and... uh oh yeah yeah right i know what you're talking about riz Verk talks that's... about all the time yeah. yeah yeah the one that's not real right that there may be because if you have a soul you have to be redeemable at some level you have to be if you're a human being if it's if you put in very advanced ai if there was advanced AI among us today, we agreed that if they're advanced enough, we cannot tell the difference. The only way we could have told the difference is if they are redeemable or not, because the AI is a slave, right? So what if there are AIs like that, only they're not AI because we didn't create them, but so they have been created by something or someone. <laughs> like if you're in a simulation, they are the Agent Smiths, right? 
those, yeah, there you would have your Ted Bundys that couldn't be explained by being beaten up from their two years old or whatever, right? Uh, it just seems that some people are unredeemable in their deep nature. But of course, how can we know? Because we don't know and we would need to know everything about the life story and whatever happened. So it's very hard to make those judgment calls. But if theoretically there are some human beings who just are through or through evil, to use the scholarly term, <laughs> and they are unredeemable. And no matter how much sunlight you flush on them, nothing can happen. Per definition, they cannot be human beings. They cannot be a part of the of the whole. I identify more with the first part of what you said. I totally identify with it. And I think it's also another beautiful contrast that you're doing with the AI is that, no, I believe every soul is redeemable. No matter how it appears to us, it's redeemable. And I think- But could there be soulless people out there? No. And that's the problem with the- co Here, the, the problem with the coil guy that you interviewed, the, fir the, the first and only yeah. thing I'd say is, uh, hey, great, it's just not supported by the data. So at this point, we have thousands and thousands of accounts that we can verify in some important ways. So again, I, I point out that there's these different data sets, right? There's the near-death experience data set. There's the after-death communication data set. There's other data sets. There's the um, terminal lucidity da data set. There's experiment, there uh, experimental data. That's where mysticism comes in. People who actually do uh, travel in the layers or whatever, levels, right. experience the love. Without great, dying. Great point. It's it's kind of in, in intentionally spiritually transformative experiences. Yeah. So you have all yeah. the spiritual and spiritually transformative experiences. You have some of them that are spontaneous, and you have yeah. some of them that are uh, that's the Ecotolle kind of thing. And then you have yeah, those exactly. who are born like that. That's the Jesus yes. thing. And, and then, and you, then you, those as you who attain out, it, like the Buddha thing. So yeah, you have that range. And then you have ones that that are seeking it out. Um, I dropped some DMT. I smoked some DMT. Yeah, I did that's whatever. That's the thing, right? You, 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 so, you, 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 it's a formation, a cultivation. Yes, it's it's the point of being a yoga or, or an esoterician. Yeah, right. We can't so all we it, can't all be born like that, and we can't all wait for the illumination to hit us by coincidence, right? So most of us are on that. Uh, approach where we're trying deliberately. I mean, your skeptical show is a version of that. You are do you, you're taking everyone on a collective journey uh, where you want to see how much it can reach. But of course, you're working on it in your private life too, right? So, so we are all just souls on that journey. But what is the point? You wanted to go well, somewhere with that. Where I was going with it was just a slight twist. Where you do, I, I agree with the first part of what you're saying. I think there's a there's a line there that we're drawing that we're saying there's other entity there's other forms of intelligence as you said that aren't going to experience that in anywhere near the same way it's just it's like it, it is not a, a parallel thing it's not the same it just is different you know you know that's the definition of evil that has to be the definition of evil. When you encounter intelligence, it could be through a human being, but when you encounter, it can be the system, like the bureaucracy, which is a soulless beast. When you encounter intelligence that is not connected, that is, that is unempathetic, that is not a part of the whole, that must be the definition of evil. Well, In isn't that funny? Isn't that form. funny when you say that? I, I, isn't that Luciferianism? Isn't that Luciferianism? Is the I mean, that... we could discuss definitions, right? Someone would disagree. Correct. That's not Luci... co co correct. Correct. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Let's not get pulled into that. But I think we can all identify with the the, the excitement of knowledge, information, and how it can be addictive in a way that we just have an innate sense that it's pulling us from spirit that it's pulling us from some deeper experience. We just, we understand there's this tension between our iPhone and the beautiful sunset. There's a tension there that we can't put our finger on that when we just 
focus a on picture that of space. a sunset and an actual sunset. <laughs> The AI, AI can't generated. tell the difference. The AI can't tell the difference, or AI, or AI generated. But the AI could not tell the difference. If you're alive, you can tell the difference. If you have a soul, I mean. So, so where right? do you take that? Where do you take that? I mean, uh, just that we we end up where we've always been. That I, I'm not buying into the AI revolution thing. Uh, we should go over to predictions because I think uh, the nightmare scenario in front of us. I mean, last time we 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 did predictions, we thought it was the end game. Is I, I promise you one thing, Alex. Twenty twenty four is what what you'd say in English. Make it or break it. That's it. It's not going to go beyond twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four will determine whether we are and waking up in dystopia or if we can trigger I, i'm not going to say paradise is the alternative because <laughs> we're so far away removed from it but uh you do you want to venture some predictions I, I certainly have some but do you want to no, no you're already you're already halfway there please go ahead well okay all i can say is uh everything is converging uh the last hurrah of the elites is going to be 2024 because they are so afraid of losing the power. Look, when Biden won, I got this feeling inside of me. Um, I couldn't explain it. It was just intuitive. And I, I, I kind of kind of looked at Donald Trump like, I think I would rather have a coffee with Biden than with Donald Trump. Depends. I'm, I'm not like sold on Trump at all. But when Biden, when the, uh, he was declared the new president, I got this bad feeling it started in my gut and it just spread in my whole body. And I was like feeling very disheartened, very disheartened. Intuitively, I knew this was the comeback of the powers behind. It. It's nothing to do with the mask, Biden, of course, right? So, so all Trump is, is an actual individual who's not backed by these evil powers for all his faults and limitations he's a human being but the biden regime is a front for the machine and they are terrified of the brexit and everything else they are not going to uh, lose power again they are hellbent on not losing power again because they think remember they project if they lose power they are going to be busted because it's all becoming so extreme now that if if the plebs get some semblance of power, if there's some semblance of democracy around, consequences may come. For everything that's happened, you know, Epstein, 9-11, JFK, the jabs, the, notwithstanding the normal corruption and everything else that is in the system, CIA, need to CBCDC, everything that they are pushing for will fall if they lose power. There's no way they're going to lose power. And they used to have uh, the left cheek and the right cheek, right? Now, suddenly you have a free roaming person that, like Trump. And he has even, he's kind of a narcissist. So he has even a personal vendetta against many of their their puppets. So that is an extra incentive. And the next likely person is even worse. The next likely person want to change the system. Trump couldn't change it if he wanted to. But the next likely person knows how to implement consequences in the system. That's obviously Bobby. He has a whole career of making them accountable. So Alex... There's no way they're going to uh, release power. And you could say, yeah, but they just have to do what Andy Parkett has demonstrated. They just have to, you know, trigger the algorithm and hijack. No, they can't even do that because they have lost so much support now that it's going to be a landslide. And that's always been the problem for election rigging is landslides. Uh, if it's like 55-45, they will always win. 
But if it's like 80, 20, or even 70, 30, they have no chance. There's no way they can get away with it. No matter how much they rig the poles, how much they rig the machines, there's no way they can beat a landslide. And it's going to be a landslide. Um, and so Tucker Carlson is uh, seeing the same thing, he, but he understands that the way they're going to do it they have some options. They could try to like kill Trump. We wake up during 2024 and Trump had a heart attack. Oh, how, how tragic. But it's not going to be enough because, first of all, so many people are not going to buy, buy it. Even if Trump actually dies of natural causes, everybody's going to blame him for having been taken out. And what does it help to kill Trump when they still have uh, Bobby around? Or someone, or, or Vivek, right? So there's two... So they can't do that one. They cannot, they tried, and they can't smear them. They tried ignoring them, smearing them. It doesn't work. So that's off the table. All the classical uh, go-to solutions are off the table. Uh, character assassination off the table, actual assassination off the table. Now, the last card then is what Alex Jones called, uh, how was he called? You know, you introduce a, con a, a crisis and then you offer a solution for that crisis. That's what they have to do. And that, enter now Whitney Webb. She's blowing the whistle about it now. They, they have had this in the works for a long time. And it's, um, it's going to be like a cyber attack combined with um, like an economical thing. Now, the other option I discussed with Joseph Farrell, and that's the UFO invasion. Uh, I don't think they will go directly to that. I think they will start with a manufactured crisis, which is the internet. So I think this will be uh, is a fifty-fifty now that this is our last uh, yearly review conversation. I'm not so sure we can have this conversation December twenty-four because they have to take down the internet uh, and they have to take down um, the money system. So I think because, you know, they will rather die. They will rather take everyone with them than dying. And dying for them is losing power, especially if it means someone like Bobby Kennedy or even Trump coming to power. So this is the, the, this is the only card. It is to manufacture a global crisis, amp up a world, a third world war, and then surf it out based on that. That's just a logical analysis of what's going on. The only other, uh, the, the other 50% is that we actually make it. That Trump, Vivek, or Bobby somehow makes it. It, it. Some of the other candidates, they are too low on the scale. Like, I, 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 I'd even take Mariana Williamson <laughs> to any of these, or, or Jill Stein, but they have no chance in hell. But uh, I can see one of these three, and, and, and this is so important because where the American machine goes, so goes the world. If you get someone like Bobby in control of the American machine, there's no way Klaus Schwab and these people can implement their agenda. There's no way. CBCD, goodbye, and, and, and Bitcoin will come and save the day. Um, there's no way WHO will be able to implement. The, they are taking over. You know that they are... Of course, you know, but if listeners doesn't know, the WHO are uh, creating these days uh, in the Western world. I, I think even China may on, be on board, but it's a way that where they can uh, have martial, global martial law. So you just need a new fake virus. But that thing doesn't work if the American machine isn't on board. This is why I think the crisis they will have to do before they do a global health crisis or even a fake UFO invasion will have to be something to do with the internet, like cyber attacks or Iran or Russia bullshit. Because like Whitney Webb uh, documents, uh, they blame, they, they have the ability. It was actually Assange who leaked this, the vault thing. They can make fingerprints for these hacker groups seemingly belonging to China, Russia, Iran, whatever. And it's manufactured. So, and and every time they say, oh, it's a Russian hacker group, we just have their word for it. There's never evidence. So that's what they ha will have to do. It will have to be an internet-based takedown. But she talks about like even 
on the level of it's not just that the internet will parts of the internet will go down it's like cars will be autopiloted to run over people etc check your interview on for example redacted this is what Tucker Carlson and so many others are seeing coming now uh, and it will have to be 2024 because they will have to stop someone taking over the American machine the American machine is spare fronting where we are going and that's why everybody has to care uh, about the presidential election I'm not saying a president is it can save us but it's certainly a clog a big enough clog in the, in the machine for their control thing I mean the problem is is mainly in America too it's the deep state it's the alphabet soup agencies so the solution is from America and the problem is for America WHO and WEF they couldn't do anything without having America on board so this is it man 2024 will be their last hurrah they will pull the final stretch of the claw and either manage to grab what's left of our autonomy and freedom or they will fail big time and the the world on the other side will be beautiful man Beaut everything will be beautiful because it will be a trajectory in the opposite direction of what we've been going to. Back to, remember 2015-16? That's the best time in the world. You know, 2012 to 2016. That's like a little, little glimpse of paradise. It's like the hippie era suddenly coming back online. <laughs> virtual, in the virtual world. And that's where we will be going back to if if they don't make it. So it's a make it or break it, and that's my prediction. We may not have this con if we have this conversation next year, Alex. It means uh, we have uh, good reason to say cheers or skull, as we say up here. Skull. What do you think yeah. ab about that, Grim? Uh, I'm sorry to pee on your pie, but uh, it's just an an it's an objective analysis. It's not anything I want, of course, but. Well, that's why, you know, I was being totally sincere in how much I appreciated you shifting to that other perspective, because that's what I want to, that's what I'm most interested in, because it's, again, the data. If the data is this is a lesser realm, then all that just takes on a whole lot less significant meaning, you know, and I always think about these apocalyptic events, and I think about, you know, there's people right now in Ethiopia or in Chad or or in Palestine, right? Their apocalypse or in America. was in America, sure. But their apocalypse at the scale that you're talking about was last week. Last week. So right now. We can yeah, we can be ethnocentric and we should be, and that's the way it is, what's only our experience. So I try not to get too hung up in that. Um the one thing, I guess, if I was going to be pulled down to that level that I, I just feel compelled, I just don't know how people, you know, you did the thing with Whitney Webb. Trump's on the plane. Trump's on the Epstein plane, not once, not twice. He's on multiple times. Trump yeah, is a but. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's like when I, I, I interviewed uh, Sean Stone, you know, Oliver Stone's son. And I said, because the other thing about Trump is Trump is the vaccine. He is the vaccine, right? He put the 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 medal on Fauci's neck, you know, the gold medal. And literally. he has an autist, and he has an autist son. He knows it's the vax. He, he hired Bobby Kennedy. So the Good point push. the the point, the point being, is Trump is a human being, he's ignorant. Well, and well, he's not all powerful. I, well, let's, let's stop. Let's stop, uh, you know, apologizing and trying to shoehorn him back. It, no, look, B maybe, Biden is an actual, maybe, maybe, Biden is an actual avatar for the deep state. I think Trump, Trump. I think the miss, I think the miss identification on Biden. And again, I think you're in a better position to do it is that is truly satanic. Right. So yeah. to have that level of control and to be in your face about it, it is Hunger Games level 
uh, uh, control. And it's in your face, you know, in a way that says, you know, we can do this and we don't care that you see it because enough people don't see it. It's in your face. That is that uh, it it has the satanic ring to it in the same way that we're saying, you know, that obsessive uh, deboxing or, you know, unboxing the iPhone, like, turn this thing on it is going to be so cool and it vibrates that screen oh it's even brighter than it was before you know we understand that there's a luciferian connection to intelligence that it like we're saying is different than when i just look at the sunset and realize that i don't have to think period i don't have to think I am here. I am it. So there is this contrast, this duality that we live all the time. So I think it doesn't, it doesn't help me to get into that because I, I'm not sure I, I'm taking it as a scientist. I'm not sure how real it is and how much it really matters. So my prediction for 2024 is AI advancement beyond what anyone yeah. is really even imagining because if you get into that community you just see it's every day every day it's leaps and bounds it's you know you mentioned the chess program but you know well, they're going to replace all their puppets with ai right that's the that's the goal it's the only way because even when they have total control in the system the problem is the human factor everybody has a soul there's too many whistleblowers look at least since Kennedy, but I mean, at least since 2001, but even since Kennedy, they have w- 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 rooted out all good people. You're doing your job, bam, you must go. You're mediocre and corrupt, let's promote you. And it doesn't help. People, human beings are popping out everywhere. I'm a Edward Snowden, I'm whistling, uh, the, uh, I'm blowing the whistle. Human beings are the problem because if they have a uh, fundamentally anti human system, in place, if that's what they want to achieve and that's what they're working for. The problem is that human beings are working in this system and you have these random people waking up or connecting the dots or just doing the job, no matter how naive they are. Mark Ober, right? He was surfing the Wall Street far off. My grandfather knew Wall Street was corrupt and he was a naive in there and, and still he had a human experience. This corporate world is bullshit. That's what's happening. You need A, I to replace you need intelligence with no connections to the whole and the reason i'm saying this is a bigger problem than the guy dying in chad is because it's not that they are going to overnight implement a nightmare and a dystopia for all of us it's that they're removing our on a collective level a possibility to create the opposite of a dystopia for the world because the Every human being, no matter how misguided they are, no matter how much they disagree, I would venture even Nazis and Zionists to believe this, is that they think we can create a better world. The problem is my better is the right one. Yours are bullshit. That's the human thing. But the fundamental programming is a better world. Now, um, I said to you in the last review or two reviews ago that there's something new going on. For the first time, this pandemic thing is a glow. You can't escape it. You can be a hermit in t- Tibet and you're still a part of this one game. Now that's been amped up and amped up. And now the CBCD, all that bullshit. So that's why it actually is a difference. Look, I'd rather live under the Pharaoh, okay? I'll join Moses and I'll get the hell out of there. Maybe even the, a Viking colony is 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 better. But this thing, man, there's no escape. It's like the matrix system is taking, googling over the whole thing. And what I'm saying, I'm not saying that we'll win. I'm just saying 2024 will be the, we said end game last time. I don't know what I was smoking. This is the end game, man. There's no other, not 2025, not 2023, not 2026. It is going to be 2024 or maybe actually 25 because 24 will determine who wins and then 25 will be implemented. So we'll see. I hope I'm wrong. Please, please be wrong. <laughs> you know, my final two hours, man. Th- I think we should throw in the towel. 
Yes, two hours we will. I was just going to say, you know, my final prediction related to that goes back to when we were talking about the AI thing. I think there's a potential silver lining in the AI that not a lot of people are thinking about, and it's uh, idealistic pursuit of truth that is part of the, you know, the medium is the massage, is part of the medium as they've defined it, is going to create more of a barrier than they've anticipated and could even yeah. be somewhat of a tipping point. So it could be a part of the solution. That's it. That's awesome. This is a, a, a untraditional agree. kind of end of year thing, but it was fantastic. I just love connecting Loved with it, you man. so much. You're great. Always. Thanks again to Al Borealis for joining me today on Skeptico. What are your predictions for 2024 and beyond? What are your predictions for AI? Let me know. Until next time, take care and bye for now.